The Cold Cobra, it's back. As with anything else out there, as times change and people's needs change, products tend to follow suit and change as well, or adapt and evolve. That's no different in the firearms industry. Around the 1950s era, police officers at the time weren't usually carrying a backup weapon, or when they were off duty, they weren't typically carrying a firearm either. That started to change about that time. The problem was, if it was a, a weapon on their body that was a backup weapon, they didn't want it quite as heavy as their normal service weapon because it was being held in a place around their ankle or somewhere like that. And if they were off duty, again, they didn't want a full-size heavy weapon because, again, they were off duty. They didn't have the big utility belt that they would normally carry. Colt came out with an aluminum alloy frame pistol. At that time, it was the Colt Cobra. Now, by looks alone, the Cobra was pretty much a detective special by Colt. However, again, the aluminum frame is what distinctly made it different than the detective special. With the aluminum alloy frame, the Colt Cobra weighed in at just 15 ounces, which was six ounces less than that detective special that it was replacing. Now, Colt had a pretty good advantage over its nearest competitor, which at the time was a Smith & Wesson Chief Special. What made it so much more attractive than the Smith & Wesson? Well, the Cobra came in at four ounces less still, and guess what? The Smith & Wesson only carried five rounds to the Colt Cobra's six. Now, around 1980, Plus P ammunition, especially in 38 Special, became pretty popular. The downside to that in the Colt Cobra was that it did, in fact, have an aluminum frame, and it made it a lot less reliable, and if nothing else, people shied away from it because it did have the aluminum frame. So sales dropped dramatically, again, with the introduction of the Plus P ammunition, and most people just got away from the Colt Cobra, so Colt said, ah, we're gonna get away from it too. So in 1981, Colt stopped manufacturing the Colt Cobra. Which brings us to today and the Plus P Safe Colt Cobra. Why is it Plus P Safe? Because now it's not an aluminum frame, it's an all steel construction. This particular model is chambered in 38 Special and again, is Plus P compatible. This model comes in with an MSRP of 699 bucks, but again, as always, you're gonna find this thing cheaper at your local gun stores. It is a double action revolver. It has a two inch barrel, holds six rounds. It has a rubber grip that's very easy to hold on to, and I love the contour of it. The finish is a matte stainless steel finish. It comes with a really nice fiber optic front sight. Very easy to acquire your target with this. Overall length is 7.25 inches. Now, one thing you'll notice about the new Colt Cobra is the fact the ejector rod. This thing is not exposed. In older models, the ejector rod was exposed as it sat out here. It didn't have the shroud over it. And the thing was, it would get bent or broken off. Uh, again, the newer models actually have these. And of course, the newest model certainly has it. And it makes for a little bit more comfort and ease knowing that your firearm is always going to be ready to eject its spent casings. Are you wondering if it's concealable? It's absolutely concealable. This thing actually fits in a J-frame holster of a Smith & Wesson perfectly. A Little bit of a difference on the bottom of the trigger guard than what the holsters are made for, but it still fits right into it. Now, as mentioned earlier, the fiber optic sights are really nice. I, I really enjoy fiber optic sights. I like whenever the sun's out, obviously, that they're really easy to pick up and, and totally fast to acquire. The problem I somewhat had when I first started shooting the Colt Cobra was this rail on top. Um, there's not really a rear sight, so to speak. Um, again, it's just a uh, rail that you're looking down. But I'll tell you what, after shooting it a couple times, it's actually pretty cool. Very intuitive and easy to use. Loading and unloading is very, very simple. If you'll notice, your release here has a little bit of a lip right there. That lip makes for very quick activation of that knob to where it releases your cylinder very, very quickly. Again, it's not slick to the point where you're gonna slip your finger off of it. You can engage it very, very fast. And of course, loading this is just as easy as it always has been with any of these revolvers. Guys, I gotta tell you, growing up, I was never a huge revolver fan. I was in that age whenever semi-automatic self-loading pistols were coming into the, you know, being more frequent, more, more out there, and actually good guns that I never really gravitated to the revolvers, although, although my dad had an awesome Colt single action Armory 357 that I absolutely love. Um, again, it wasn't concealable and um, kind of hard to carry. A little bit of weight to them and all that. I gotta tell you, man, the Colt Cobra, this thing is nice, man. And, and I go back to the concealability of it. You know, it's gonna carry six rounds where some of your semi-autos out there now, the real small compact semi-autos, they're only gonna hold six or seven rounds. So I don't feel like I'm giving up much. Plus, I got a really nice double action trigger. The trigger on this thing is nice. Uh, you know, not a, lot of, not, not a lot of creep. It doesn't feel like you're pulling it for a very long time. It's heavy enough to where it's safe in the double action mode to obviously have a fully loaded firearm carried on your person. 
but again, the trigger's not so hard that I feel like I'm going to be straining to actually, uh, you know, work. And same goes for women. If women are going to be using this thing, or weak men, i got to be fair there, uh, obviously they're not going to struggle and jerk the gun all over the place because the trigger is a little bit more maintainable. I do like the, the shape of the whole grip. I believe that's a hog grip. Um, the, as most hog grips are, they're easy to grip. Your hand really sticks to it. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's, it's, it's got a stickiness to it to where when it gets hot, you know, some of the really cheaper rubber grips out there tend to kind of, uh, I don't know what happens to the, to the rubber, but it gets real tacky. And this one doesn't do that. This one just has a good grip, rubbery feel to it. Again, I like the front sights on it. Um, a lot of things they've done to it, they have reshaped the trigger guard a little bit. And again, I like the fact that they kept it close enough to where you can still utilize your J-frame holsters. That's a nice touch right there because nobody likes to go out and buy a firearm that's gonna cost you five, six, seven hundred bucks. And then at the same time, you're spending another hundred dollars or so on a nice holster. So I like that fact. Now, as I like to do in some of my videos, I like history. And one of the things that this older Colt Cobra model, not this particular model that's the all steel frame, but the older aluminum frame models, yeah, they got a little bit of history of this gun. The most notable point in history was Jack Ruby, the old thug who killed uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. He actually went, when, when Lee Harvey was being transported from, I believe, the city jail to the county jail, Jack Ruby went in there and shot him, and he used, believe it or not, a old Colt Cobra pistol. Another somewhat notable that you might not have heard a whole lot about this, but it's interesting from a historical standpoint, is that Monica Ertl used the old Colt Cobra 38 to kill Roberto Quintanilla. Quintanella was the man who cut off the hands of the corpse of Che Guevara in 1971. So that's kind of another notable uh, introduction of the Colt Cobra with a little bit of old history right there. So again, guys, if you get a chance, go shoot the Colt Cobra. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I like the fact that it's now an all steel frame. Uh, not necessarily because you can shoot the plus P because I'm not, uh, plus P, I'm of the opinion if you shoot what you shoot, if you hit what you're shooting at, uh, the power of the ammo is not that big of a deal. And uh, I just like the fact that it's an all steel frame construction versus the old aluminum alloy because I, f I like the weight of it. I like the balance of it uh, and it feels durable. It's got a nice robust feel to it. So again, get a chance to shoot it, check it out. Hey guys, please subscribe to us here on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook, Gun District, um, Twitter, Instagram. We really appreciate that when you guys do that. Share the videos if you get a chance and we'll be coming out with some new videos very, very soon. Always good to see you guys.